the name of the show is The Way to Go. My name is Alan Bendich. I'm going to be your host. Tonight we have this exceptional actor. His name is Jason Abrams, and he's my guest on the show today. Thank Welcome you for to the show. Me. Thank oh, you. Oh, it's my pleasure. So, Jason, where have you been all my life? No, I mean, oh. <laughs> this is the first time we met, right? Yes, yes. yes. So, um, where are you from originally? Woodstock. Woodstock. Yeah. Cool. So that, that's like a really cool place to, to grow up. Oh, it's the best. Everybody knows it for the hippies and the, the music and the festivals, which the original wasn't there, but right. in 94 it was, yeah. Right. I, 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 had a, I, I had a co-worker who had his summer place in Woodstock, and he'd go there every weekend and just chill out all the time. Yeah. It's a good place to chill, right? Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of Hollywood goes up there now in, in terms of the East Coast Hollywood, the, the film and TV execs and all the stars like to kind of hide away up there. So uh, you grew up there. Do you, when, did, when did you come to New York City? You live in Brooklyn, right after right? SUNY New Paltz, yeah, right after school. Right. Um, my parents were like, "Cool, you're done, go," and uh, and I was excited. I had been doing theater up there. And so is that what you studied at, at uh, New Paltz? I didn't. I didn't. I wanted that other side just in case. So, so what did you did. study? Uh, communications, but but with That's a lot cool. of focus on business and ethics. Well, yeah. yeah. It's, I remember my parents because I'm an actor too. They said. You should have uh, get a degree, get a business degree. You could fall back on yeah. it, which I did. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so so when you left school, what'd you do? I ran really fast. <laughs> like I was like, cool. Um, no, I came down and I, I I fell into to producing. Actually, I started wow. acting, but I I the people I met wanted to create content because that was the beginning of kind of this social media and. Uh, the beginning of these phones that had better cameras, and so we started right. trying to just produce content. Because what do you do? You need a reel. You need to show people kind of what you can do in terms of your range. Mm -hmm. So I just dropped right into it right away. So you had studied uh, theater in school as well when you were uh... A little bit. So some of my electives were theater. I had done theater upstate at the Conservatory for the Arts, where I'm from, and um, I got a lot of good parts there. Mm -hmm. And that was enough, I had the itch from before that, so that was enough to kind of hold me over. Mm -hmm. Once I came to the city, I had my SAG card, because I got that on more of the worlds upstate when they were shooting locally. Oh, that's cool. So I just fell right into it down here. So uh, did you meet Tom Cruise? Yes. He, he kind of looked up to me, right. even though he's worth a lot more. But he's um, short. He, yeah, he has <laughs> custom <laughs> shoes and an Apple box wherever he goes. Right. Um, it was the first thing I noticed, but he's, he was really sweet to me, really nice crew. Yeah, really I nice met crew. him. Um, when he was doing, um, I forgot, Taps, I guess it was. Because I met him and uh, Sean Penn at a okay. place called the Coconut Teaser on Sunset. Okay. And uh, they were getting ribs. It was like a really cool place on Sunset yeah. Boulevard. And I, I, w I brought a date there that I had met at the Hollywood Palace where I was bartending. Yeah. And she said, oh, that's Tom Cruise. And I said, yeah, there's Sean Penn. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I didn't know them from a hole in the wall, but I introduced the girl I was with to Sean Penn and Tom Cruise. Yeah. That's the only experience I had meeting them. Yeah. But, uh, but they were cool. They were nice about it. You know, I they, wouldn't picture them two hanging out together. Well, they weren't, you know, they had just done taps. Yeah. So it was like uh, yeah. they were in the same movie. So I guess they were still. Such great careers that, 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 that at yeah. some point they would cross, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, two different, I mean, like between Scientology and like left left wing leanings, it's like a, totally different. It but, would be interesting to see it happen but now. But they seemed like they were having a good time. You yes. Know? And they, but they were kids. They were probably in their 20s because I was in my 20s and they're younger than yeah, I am. So yeah. they, maybe they were in the teens. Yeah. But, uh, you know, two fantastic actors, though, yeah. I would say. I yeah. mean, uh, it was great. So when you came, so you were making content. So what was the first content that you made? You know, one of the earliest videos I did was a political video because everybody loves politics. Right. <laughs> um, and I did it as an opportunity to work right. and create content. But it wasn't intended to say, this is my view. This is how I feel politically. Right. But this guy that hired me, he was so Hillary, oh. so pro-Hillary. Right. And it was back when, you know, in the beginning when she was running. So we did, uh, it was called Hillary in the House. You right. wanted a woman in the House, the White House, Hillary Clinton's right. the one. So he made this, this original song and I, I produced that video for him. Well, and cool. I brought it back upstate because, you know, I always wanted to, to, an excuse to see my family right. and to, to, to involve the local town. And the mayor showed up and all these people showed up and we talked about it on the radio station and we said some star is there, so come down and visit us. And right. people got fed and, and we had a good time. And, you know, the video went viral. That's awesome. And, uh, and so from then I made some more contacts. Well, and, uh, talking about that, though, yeah. you brought a couple of stills uh, of that, uh -oh. right? Yeah, and okay. I, I did or my mom gave them to you. Okay. One or the other. <laughs> so actually, if we could find some of those those stills. Oh, there it is. Oh, my gosh. It's, cool. Uh, it's pretty bright. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. I like the hat. 
Thank you. Yeah. Oh my God. You look young. Yeah. Well, and that's when you the, were a blonde. No. The, <laughs> well, yeah. No. The hair. The hair. <laughs> Just the kidding. hair's a little lighter, I'm, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was clean shaven. And there's Paul. Oh. And he still wants Hillary. Um, in the house, in case anybody's wondering. Well, I so. have a, I have a Hillary story too. Huh? Um, my father uh, used to be president of his senior citizens club when uh, back about 20 years ago, whatever she was, and she was like I guess running for uh, senator of New York at mm -hmm. the time, and she came he, she came to visit people, you know, because old people vote. So yeah. she came to the senior <laughs> club, and my father got a chance like to like she. They shook hands. He said, "Don't shake my hands," and he, she gave him a kiss. So was, you know, so <laughs> right, exactly. That, that, that's my father, and that was Hillary. She was very sweet. I mean, it was, uh, you know, this was, uh, you know, it was interesting. Yeah, it was great. yeah. We met her because she saw the video, and she was, she you like know, back it? then she was more personal. Yeah, she she liked. It. She said, "I can't believe somebody takes it this seriously," and it's it's an honor to be, you know, trying to represent. And my father you guys. said, "The one thing my father loves women." You know, so, <laughs> but he said she was so beautiful. I said, "Okay, great." You know, I said, "That's good." So you did that, right? Yes. And that was the first thing you ever produced. One of the first things I did, and then I had this um, this show called "Sexy Jewish Rapper," mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of the, like the idea that you're a transplant to the city and right. what it's like to come from like a countryside or a, a suburban area. Right. And so I kind of rapped with this gold chain and this big bird outfit and. Um, kind of not fitting in, but trying to. Right. And so I've I've done these like little uh, sketch comedies and, and these bits, and um, some of them hit. And uh, and if they don't, then at least I can laugh at myself. Because so you have a, you, you the have a theater background, right? Uh, yes. So uh, is it? I mean, the transition from theater to to film or to cameras. Yeah. Is it is it different acting for you? I'm working on it. <laughs> I mean, it's like um, you know, you get the call back and you're on hold, and then they release you, and it's like. Was it me or was it the universe? Right. Like, is there somebody better than me? Right. Um, and uh, you have to get over that. That's one thing. You, you yeah, have to, you have to get over. Yeah, that. The, 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 but the you're still theaters, young, so it's a <laughs> I'm still young. I have a little more time, a little little bit left on on my head. Right. Um, but yeah, it's it's different. You know, theater's big, and, and and TV and film they don't miss anything. Right. And those subtleties are are, are so much fun to perfect right. and work on. Yeah. The only the bad part about film sometimes. I mean, I love film. I mean that's that's where it's at for me, but if the makeup is wrong or if the hair is wrong, it's like oh. I agree with you. I love blaming it on somebody else. I'm like, no, 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 it wasn't me. I mean, I, I did a film no. recently, um, yeah. and it's it was it's going to be released soon. But I went to the premiere and I was looking. They made my hair dark because it was flashback scenes. Okay. And it was like, oh no, you know, the hair was like it's so it, important. It, it makes it like there was even like a like a slight smudge that we missed. It was like, oh. I it was killing me. It was, it was worse. I've been so lucky. I always, I always look great and, and feel great because of the team I'm around. Right. And, and I, I never think it's me. I always think it's, I feel comfortable. The director, right. the producer's great, the writing's great. It takes an army. I know, and I love it. I yeah. mean, the, the collaboration, and, and especially when you're with a group of people that you you trust and you work with. Like, tomorrow I'm going to be working on a commercial, which yeah. I'm so excited yeah, I'm about. Excited. But I've been working with the same people for 10 years, on and off. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't hear from them for, like, months. And then all of a sudden I say, Alan, are you available? On the, and they know I work during the week, so yeah. it's always a weekend shoot. Yeah. And it's always it's a surprise, and for 10 years. And it's so wonderful to have people that actually, you know, professional people that actually can count on you. I bet it's so nice to be thought of, yeah. yeah it is, yeah. it's the best. I'm trying to build that network. You it know, takes with, time sometimes, you know? That's the whole thing. Well, with Mad Men, oh, yeah. I was I was. Oh, yeah, by the way, did, were you on Mad Men? Oh, my God, <laughs> thank you for noticing. I got stopped in the airport once, and they said, you were in Mad Men. I said, yes. They go, you were the Jew. Right. They needed a Jew. I said, yeah, well, um, I was background on the show, right. and I was being considered for a part. Right. But be, being considered for a part, it was, stand over there. Here's two other people that look like a Jewish guy from the art department because we need this for the show. All right, you all look good. Who has the darkest hair and the biggest nose? And they said, y you might do, but right. we still need to see you again tomorrow. So the producer says, can you come back tomorrow? I said, yeah. Um, so I go to this, this interview. Ten minutes after I leave, all I had to do was some reaction. So uh, right. you got caught. Make an make a awkward face. I left. I got a call, and they said, you, you got the part. So I go on the set. And I met Vincent Carthizer, and I had known him previously, wow. and I didn't know he was going to be there. Right. I had been working on a film in college, right. and we had done a lot of phone chats with Vincent through his agent at ICM. Right. And we were going to work together, and we never had, but we became friends over the phone. So cool. I show up, and Vinny's there. I felt right oh in. At the end of the shoot, they say, come to the rap party. Oh, at the rap party, Matthew Weiner, the creator, and right. also the Sopranos, he says, will you come, you know, along with Dave Chase, 
Matthew Weiner says, will you come to Chase L.A.? Too? David Chase wasn't there. Right. But Matthew Weiner had some great credits coming right. from, you know, yes. Sopranos and everything. And he says, will you come to L.A. if we need you? to be recurring as David so, Cohen. I'm sorry, I can't. I said, you know, let me, I gotta ask my mom. And so he goes, yeah. he goes, will you come? And I said, of course. I, I, Never heard from him again. I know, and I love the guy, and yeah. I love the entire, Alan Taylor thinks of me sometimes, the director of that pilot, he's great. Right. He went on to do Thor oh, and, wow. um, and Newark, which is the Sopranos films right. coming out. And, and they're all great. But I'm just not waiting for that opportunity, but I'm like, you know, Alan has some friends, so right. maybe maybe my friends and his friends and our right. people and his people. So. I know I know that feeling. Two things. I, I'm, whenever I get the call from these people I work with for 10 years, it's yeah. always like, can you come? It's like, I'm already there. Yeah. yeah. But then I also, I've had like situations on, even on this show, where I'm, I'm talking to filmmakers that, you know, whatever, and they say, you know, we got to work together, we got to work together. Never hear anything. But then... I have had also the situation where I've had people sitting in your seat saying, we got to work together. And then out of the blue, a month later, I get the call. Remember I told you that you know, we, we could work together? And it's like, so you never know. You, you never, never know. know. You never know. And, and the sentiment's always there. And right. it's not always up to them. Right. One of my good friends, he went to college with my brother, um, Pete Lalianis, and he is an executive producer of, of Blindspot, which just finished. Right. He was a head writer there. And his boss always had, you know, somebody in mind for these parts that Pete had me in mind for. Right. And so, you know, it's it's nothing no nothing bad, right? right. For them or me. Right. But timing I know. And, so and, timing. and energy and momentum and opportunity, they all have to kind of fall into that circle at the same time. Yeah, but what happened to me also, I, I worked on Cagney and Lacey for three years, right? Three and a half years. And the 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 people that were casting Spinal Tap asked me if I could work on the show, but I had a sure. commitment to Cagney and Lacey. My son, to the, I mean, when, when he heard that I could, be, could have been on Spinal Tap, and believe me, I wish I did. I knew Rob Reiner, I met him a few times, and yeah. he used to come to the club that I bartended. Yeah. I mean, I missed that opportunity. And you can't, you know, once you miss an opportunity and the film's wrapped, you don't have oh, that opportunity. Okay. I, mean, I, read, so I read an article recently about this actor, De Niro, um, I guess Robert <laughs> De Niro. And I'm not familiar with his career to the degree that, or, or my memory doesn't serve me correctly. Right. But he had to turn down two films because he was working on other films and, at the time. Uh, uh, and they were with Scorsese. Oh and and Scorsese loves him enough to say, come, back, come on back, right. I'll forgive you. But he's like, don't you wish you could have done that? Right. And <laughs> that I, one was award winning too. But that, but so. Spinal Tap. I mean, that to me would have been like yeah. That so was much your fun. your your De Niro moment. That's and it. and I I wish I could always be in the right place at the right time. And I hear people get you know discovered in elevators, so right. I'm I'm always going in an elevator. Right. I'm like, if I wait here long enough, will they find me? Like it's very you know. But what I've, I mean? I've so. gotten parts because uh, directors say you know you look like Pacino, and I've gotten yeah. parts where they you said do. you look like. De Niro, and but I've gotten two commercials, one for when I someone said I look like, and that was in Hollywood. I got the Hitachi commercial because yeah. they said you know the, the director was doing a video uh, yeah. audition for me. He said you know you look like De Niro, and then there must have been about a hundred guys. It was an open call, and then I go back to my home, and this is back in you know when they didn't have cell phones, yeah. and my light was blinking on my my, uh, my answering machine. And it was it, I got the part. And you have a great look. No, well, whether I got a great look or not, it's like, those are the times when, you know, like- God bless you. When the, <laughs> that's a good one. Those are the times when everything converges, like the world is like, it's, it's like, it's the best. I yeah. Mean, I mean, what's it like getting a part? Oh, it's, it's, um, it's better than Gatorade. I mean, it, it gives you a rush of energy. It right. gives you this feeling of acceptance. And I think part of it is, I just wanna be, not just accept it, but I just want to be able to create and right. make a living doing something I'm passionate about. Right. And so I feel w warm and fuzzy. It's like being loved. Oh, there's no, That's I think how it's, it feels I think it's the best thing in the world. I mean, the best feeling. And I've had kids. I've been, I I've won't been, tell your wife. I no, I mean, well, she'll never see. She doesn't watch this show. <laughs> no, 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 no. My kids don't either. No, but <sighs> one day they will. You know, that's the but, other thing, because these love, things are forever. But you love acting, you I love, love creating. Acting. I mean, it's, it's, fulfilling. it's not even, I can't even verbalize it. It's like, it's just like something that, it just happens. You know, it's just like the adrenaline rush, the, yeah. the, you know, whatever it is. But, yeah. you know, you talked about uh, Mad Men. You brought a, you brought a uh, video. That, I what, did, right? I brought a clip. Your, yeah. Is it your real? It's got a little bit of everything, yeah. Okay, um, and it's real, right? It's yeah, real. it is it's real. A real, real. I might even have a piece okay. of, of, of Eric Roberts in there. I did a film with oh, him as well, yeah. Oh, he, he's a cool dude. Yeah. Okay, so let's check out this real. I'd like to see it, okay? I mean, I've seen it before, but... I'm
cool. I would use an adjective, but we're on you know, seven o'clock at night. Oh. No, but that was so cool, man, really. I mean, how great is it to be? In, I mean, I haven't been on a network show in 30 years, you know, so it's, uh, and Mad Men, I used to watch every episode of that. It was like, uh, so what, I guess what you, we were talking about the, the film that you actually produced, uh, Night Sweats? Yeah, Night Sweats. So yeah. tell me about that. I mean. That, what do it, you play? It only took nine years. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, from the idea of, you know, some of the experiences that I've had right. being in the city. But I play, um, I play my best, you know, neurotic, OCD, right. anxious. <laughs> um, a natural. Yeah, a natural, natural. You know, the geek, the, 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 the awkward guy. Right. He, he could stay over there. Um, right. Just close the door between us and him. But, uh, but Charles is, is great. It, was, it wasn't much of a stretch. It was so much fun. Right. The stretch was um, producing every day right. while trying to act. Um, it's difficult. I didn't have interns. I didn't have assistants. So how did you get all, all the necessary parts together to make this? I just film? didn't sleep for that, for that amount of time. Right. Um, you know, once we raised the funding. Did you write it as well? Or? I, I, I Creatively, I helped a little bit, right. but I did not write it. Okay. Um, my producing partners wrote it and directed it. And, um, and, and after we raised the funds, right. it was my job to figure out who we're gonna cast, who are the options. You know, I work with Donna McKenna on the casting. And then uh, who are we gonna bring into this and how are we gonna make it happen? Donna McKenna is a good friend of JT's. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. You know, and we, we both, we're both good friends of JT's. It's so a nice circle of creatives. He's the best, yeah. he's a great. It so makes New York, New York. But Donna McKenna is a big name. Yeah, I mean, yeah she was great and she gave me, you know, um, just a, a lot of help and right. you know, it's a puzzle. Who's available? Who's going to help the film? Who's going to work and all together? And she's friends with Eric Roberts. I mean, she has a connection yeah. to Eric. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we considered Eric. She's worked in a couple of... He's, he's, uh, yeah. yeah, it's interesting. But we got John Wesley ship, and okay. we're very happy. You so know. you worked with Eric Roberts I worked in with Eric show. before before Night Sweats. Oh, but he was yeah. in that movie too, right? Uh, Eric was in Potter's Field. Oh, Potter's Field. John Wesley ship oh, was... Okay, I got that. I feel a lot more famous when you talk about it like this, like all these things that are yeah, going you got all on. These, yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Eric and I, you know, going back, but um, but John Wesley Shipp from The Flash and Dawson's oh, oh. Creek, he was one of our uh, uh, stars. What was that like, Nightwings. working with him? It was great. He made it, it Was that so, the first time you met him? So comfortable, yes. Yeah, I, I so what's it like when you, let's say, you, you know, like actors, right? They don't know each other. They come in, sometimes they don't even get a chance to rehearse. Yeah. Right? So you just come in on the set, all of a sudden you, you're seeing a name. Yeah. And you've got a, you know, you've got your lines. He's got his lines, or she's got his li her lines. Yeah. What's it like? Well, what? it's like when I texted Alan last week. I'm um, telling you, know, it's great. It's great to meet you. I can't wait to see you. Right. Looking forward to the show. Thank you for having me. He writes back, "Who? Oh, hi. Who are you?" <laughs> and so I'm like, "Because <laughs> he has a true. team of people that that bring these these right. these lucky folks like me to you." And and I love your show. Okay. And I had heard of it, right. but I didn't know JT was behind it. And right. so yeah, we're coming together. But once once you and I kind of started chatting, we're like, "Oh, we know this person." Right. We fell right into it. It was super comfortable. Right. But it was the same way when I met John Wesley Shipp. Right. You know, we go to lunch and it's like, you know, you're stiff for a second. You know, it's it an honor to meet you. Right. He's like, sit down, have a drink, relax. Right. Like, you know, and then he talks about our experiences in the script. And right away we find common ground. And it, it was just an honor and a delight to work right. with him. It is interesting, else. you know, like get, once you break the ice. Yeah. So it's, yeah. so it's like a, any relationship. Once, yeah. once you're able to get comfortable with the person, then acting becomes natural. Second nature. It is. It's yeah. amazing how that works. But if it's somebody that doesn't make it feel that way. And I've had that. You're like. Now, I won't mention it, but there was, there was one actor on Cagney and Lacey that we used to call him 20, 25 take, I won't say what the guy's name was, <laughs> but it would, be, it would be good because we knew that we'd get overtime. But it was also bad because, you know, again, again, yeah. again. Yeah, and know. the crew and the, mm. the above the line folks, that yeah. you know, they creatively, they think, do we really want this person here? That's, well, the problem is you this know? guy had a contract for the, yeah. the, for the entire show. Yeah, so. <laughs> and you know what should say in the contract, yeah. I, this is gonna haunt me one day, that they should have to stay right. so that the coverage right. for their, their day players right. Is, is that much better? Right. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to, oh, to yeah. have your lines with Brad Pitt or whoever it is? Right. You know, I'm just pulling a name out right. of the hat, but and I love his work, and right. I would just hope that you know, if I get the opportunity to work with them, right. that I get to really work with them. Yeah, I've, it would just you know, be an I've honor. worked with names, and you know, some of them are f fantastic actors. But when well, Tyne Daly and Sharon Glass, they would get, the, you know, we'd, we'd have 
they would have like most of the lines on the, because those were Cagney and Lacey. Those right, were the right. two actresses that played Cagney and right. Lacey. And every day they'd have changes of the script and they'd get, the, they'd get lines and we'd have to, they'd look at it for 10 to 15 minutes and then we'd have to shoot. So then I take back what I say because <laughs> in the in spirit of trying to be prepared, right. they need to go home. They need a little bit of downtime to right. learn the lines. But so, these guys are but, able to do it though. So, I mean, th these, these were people who at least, and we'd have, we'd have the lady on the set right. or that was like the script lady smoking a cigarette and making sure that <laughs> Every word that you said was on, you know, yeah. was on the script. She knows smoking's bad for her, right? Yeah, but that was kind of <laughs> they, they weren't just smoking cigarettes on that oh side. Oh, my God. And they weren't just drinking soda. Okay, that, tell me more. <laughs> but it was fun back in the 80s, you know. And, uh, and you, were, you were in Hollywood then. Yes. And when you said you left Hollywood in the 80s, right. it hit me, because we were talking before the show, and, and I was like, you broke up with Hollywood. Like, I got all, like, emotional. Well, because Hollywood broke up with me. I lost my job on Cagney and Lacey. I lost, them other, yeah, I lost my job on Moonlighting. Yeah. And my mother said, when are you coming back? When are you going to finish your college? When are you going to get married? So finally I just said, you know, enough of that. I came back, finished college, yep. got married, yep. had kids, and then 22 years later I started acting again. And it's, I've been acting for the last 10 years, which is great. It's the closest thing to suicide that I'll ever come to. It's so hard. <laughs> right. You're, you're, oh, no, it's, it's you're a glutton for punishment. Right. And, and your parents, they said, you know, we love you. Isn't that enough? And, and you're like, yeah, yeah, but then I have this thing inside of me that I can't. And 20, I left it, it was for like a few years to do yeah, some so you know paying like. work, and I loved it. I got to travel all over the country. I was right. at rock shows promoting the New York Times. Right. I was treated like a king. You're backstage with Blink-182, Dave Matthews. But, but you're backstage. Still, you're not front stage. I was, I was working these shows. I got to know these acts, right. and, I, and I was... When the show, when the people came in, I promoted the New York Times and gave concert T-shirts and autographs and all these oh, things. Oh, that's out. cool. And, and being that kind of roadie experience, that was fun, but, but not enough. Right. It's like... It's almost there, but it's not there. You know, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, the, the, I would get close to it again, or, or I'd be walking down Hollywood, uh, Hollywood, New York City, and there'd be like, you know, a set on this, on, and I'm thinking, oh my God, could I work on that set? Can I and, play a part in somebody's anything, life? Can anything, I inspire anything. and and and, and, and then these guys that I'm doing a commercial yeah. with tomorrow, they're the people who got me started again. And yeah. It was in 2010, and I've been working ever since. And I'll tell you. I love this business. Yeah. There's, there's no sh there's no business like show business. It's true. So what's what's your next? Uh, what's oh my your gosh! Next thing? I was worried about that because mm -hmm. I have a couple things in the in the works, but you know I don't want to jinx anything. No, so don't um, talk about it. But are, are they films? Are they? Uh, I have a pilot that I'm reading for this, which you this, don't have to talk about. This week, but I mean, uh, but, coming up. But in general, you have you can, uh, pilot. Another film I'm, I'm trying to develop. Um, right. Where I I um I lose something really close to me and somebody really close to me, and then I have to kind of try and come back to earth after after all these uh, Believe me, I've been there and done that in life. Yeah. So that's something that's definitely uh, relatable. Yeah, I look for content that, that really touches me and moves me because you only have so much time. Right. And like De Niro, I'm afraid I might miss out on Scorsese's offer if I take some <laughs> student film. No offense to NYU or Columbia, um, mm -hmm. I love what they're doing, but I'm just really at this point in my career, after 15, you know, 16 years, right. I'm trying to um, to find rewarding projects I could be a That's part. it, that's what it's all about, you know. and. But for me, after like m tons of years, I'm just looking for, for work. <laughs> like five more than me. <laughs> right, no, but to me, th for me, it's like, uh, I I'll work anywhere, if, as long as I appreciate the people I'm working with. I'm not looking for, I'm not looking for stardom, I'm not yeah. looking for, I'm not even looking for success. I'm looking yeah. to have a good time, and yeah. to me, acting, I'll make the most out of any part that I have, yeah. you know, and, and I'll get the most out of it. I'll, I'll, I'll squeeze the juice yeah. out of it, you know, and, uh, and that's all I'm looking for. And even after that, you're like, I could have done this or I should have done that. And well, I, I, don't, I don't do that. You're able to just let it be. The only thing I, is when I look on a, and I say, oh, my God, my hair is messed up. That's the only thing I look at. That I don't look one at one strand of black. Or, or I have the, the, you know, like something's wrong with that oh. the makeup. But other than <laughs> yeah. that, the acting, I did my best. Yeah. And, and I, I'll put it this way. It doesn't matter what... It's, it's how you feel when you're acting, I think. That in that than, moment. And that's in it. that moment. And it's the moment. And the character lives then. So sometimes you'll, your perspective will change as you get older right. or play different roles. But um, like a credit to Joaquin Phoenix be, oh, and God. Joker. He's my, one of my favorite actors of all time. What happened was it was so timely. Right. You know, Night Sweats too is, is timely. Right. It's a little bit different than Joker because it's $200 million cheaper in terms of the budget. <laughs> But the, these these folks that come out with with parts that are so timely, right. it's almost like romance, right? And speaks to you in a way that you learn and you get inspired, and, and life just and becomes that much some, easier. And to see someone being able to perform at such a level, oh. and, and Mr. Natural, 
You know, I mean, he's such a natural, yeah. fantastic. And I'm surprised because he was so skinny. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how you could naturally walk with right. no meat on your <laughs> right. bones. He's just made so many sacrifices you know, for the project. We projects. all make sacrifices, but you know, there's only one thing, one thing left to say. That's a wrap. Good night, folks. <laughs>